Okay, so in this video, we will solve the following linear system that consists of four equations, and if you look closely, four variables, x, y, z, and w. As always, the first step is to construct the corresponding augmented matrix. Here we will order the variables in the same order, x, y, z, and w. And we will be a tad sneaky. We won't write the equations in the same order because we know that we are looking for, as always, if possible, in the leftmost column, a leading one in the top row. So if we write the first row, the first equation, as our first row, well, since there is no z here, we'll have a zero coefficient, which will not be a one. But if instead we take already row three, now equation three as our top row, this is one times x, and we will have a leading one right away. And so we'll do this. So we'll implicitly here be swapping row one with row three. And this will save us a bit of writing. So row three, one, negative one, three, one, one. Now row one, zero, one, seven, one, five. Row two, negative four, four, one, negative two, two, and finally row four, two, one, zero, as there is no z, one, and three. We have our leading one in the top row. As always, we kill the entries below it. This is already a zero. We will do row three plus four row one, and we will do row four minus two row one. We are not changing the first and second row, so we will first recopy them. Let's apply the first row operation, row 3 plus 4, row 1, negative 4 plus 4 is 0. 4 plus 3 times negative 1, 4 minus 3 is 1. 1 plus, uh, oops, sorry, we're doing plus 4, aha! 4 plus 4 times negative 1 is 4 minus 4 is 0. There you go. 1 plus 4 times 3 is 12, 1 plus 12 13. Negative 2 plus 4 times 1 plus 4 is positive 2. And 2 plus 4 times 1, 4. 2 plus 4 is 6. There you go. Second row operation, row 4, minus 2 row 1. So 2 minus 2, 0. 1 minus 2 times negative 1, 1 plus 2, 3. 0 minus 2 times 3, 0 minus 6, negative 6. 1 minus 2 times 1, 1 minus 2, negative 1. 3 minus 2 times 1, 3 minus 2, 1. So we have our leading one in the leftmost column top row. We've killed the entries below. We ignore and we repeat. We start from the leftmost column and try to get a leading one in the top row. Since all the entries here are 0, we can't be done. Second column, there are two non-zero entries, and we already have a 1 in the top row, and so we're good to go. We have for free our second leading one. Let's kill the entries below it. So we will do row four minus three row two. We can recopy the first three rows as we're not changing them. And then perform the row operation. So let's see. 0 minus 0, 0. 3 minus 3, 0. Negative 6, negative 3 times 7, negative 21 is negative 27. Negative 1, negative 3, negative 4. 1, 
minus 3 times 5, 1 minus 15, negative 14. We've killed the entries below, so we ignore and we repeat. Start from the leftmost column and try to introduce a leading 1 in the top row. All the entries are 0, can't have a leading 1, same thing here. Here's the third column where both entries are non-zero. So once again, we will try and introduce a leading one in the top row. We have two options. And again, if possible, we will try to avoid introducing fractions. We could be naive here and multiply row 3 by 1 over 13. We would have a 1, but then we'd have 2 over 13, 6 over 13. Mm, that's not really appealing. Let's try to do better. Think of it. 13 times 2 is 26, and if you add 26 to negative 27, you get negative 1, which will give you a chance to have your third leading 1 without introducing fractions, specifically over 13s. Let's do so. So let us do row 4 plus 2 row 3, and then we'll swap and negate. This will be a little bit of extra work in terms of the number of row operations than simply multiplying by 1 over 13, but the benefit is to avoid fractions altogether, especially something over 13. If it were over 2 or 3, then you might consider doing it, but over 13, let's try to avoid it. We recopy the rows that we are not changing as always. And now we apply the row operation. Row 4 plus 2 row 3. 0 plus 0, 0. Plus 2 row 3, yeah. 0 plus 0, 0. Negative 27 plus 2 times 13 plus 26 is negative 1. Negative 4 plus 2 times 2 plus 4 is 0. Negative 14 plus 2 times 6 plus 12 is negative 2. Now we have a negative 1 in here. I will slightly abuse the notation. I will do two things. I will negate row 4 to make this into leading 1, and then I will swap row 3 with row 4. And I say abuse because the row 4 here refers no longer to the old 4th row, but to the new one after it was negated. And this is a good idea in a sense because this will avoid having to recopy this matrix one extra time. As it is a slightly large matrix, this is definitely worth it. Let's recopy the first and second row. So we negate, so we'll have a 1 and a 2, and then we swap, so it will become 0, 0, positive 1, 0, positive 2. And then row 3 is now instead of row 4, so 0, 0, 13, 2 and 6. Okay, we have our third leading 1, we kill the entries below it, and so we do quite simply row 4 minus 13 of row 3. We are only changing row 4, we copy the first three rows. Thirteen minus thirteen, zero. Two minus zero, two. Six minus two times thirteen minus twenty-six is negative twenty. And now, we have our leaning 1 in the third row, we kill the entries below, we ignore, and we are on the hunt for our next leading 1. Well, all of these are zeros, they can't become leading 1s. This is a non-zero entry, and we can simply multiply by 1 half to get our fourth and final leading 1. 
So we'll do one half of row four, and then we'll be good to go. Let us recopy the first three rows as we're not changing them. Move on to a new page. And now we multiply by one half, so we get our fourth leading one and negative ten. Just to remind ourselves of which columns go with which variable, this was the column for x, for y, for z, and for w. And now once again we have four variables, x, y, z, and w. Each one possesses a leading one, therefore every variable is leading, and because of this we have a unique solution. Now since we have reached the bottom row, this is the end of Gaussian elimination. And as always, because every variable is leading, and that we have a unique solution, we now use backwards substitution. Let's do it here. So we start from the bottom row and we can solve for w, which is really easy. w is simply equal to negative 10. Now we move up one row and we can solve for z you can see that there is no term for w, and so we get quite easily that z equals 2. Move up one more row, now things are a bit more interesting as both coefficients here are non-zero. So we solve for y. As always, look at the equal sign first, equals 5. There's a positive 7z on the left-hand side. Onto the right, it becomes a negative 7z. There's a positive w on the left-hand side. Onto the right-hand side, it becomes a negative w. But we know z and w, so we can replace. We get 5 minus 7 times 2 minus negative w, which gives us what? Well, 5 minus 14 plus 10. Negative 14 plus 10 is negative 4 plus 5, positive 1. And finally, we can solve for x moving up one more row. x, as always, equals 1. A negative y will become a positive y on the other side. A positive 3z becomes a negative 3z. And a positive w becomes a negative w. We can now replace, as we know the values of y, z, and w, so we get 1 plus y, which is also 1, minus 3 times z, minus 3 times 2, minus w, which is negative 10. So we get 1 plus 1, minus 6, plus 10. Well, 1 plus 1 is 2, minus 6, minus 4, plus 10, positive 6. And that's it. We now have our unique solution. Of course, as always, we conclude by rewriting it in the proper order. x, y, z, and w. x is equal to 6. y was equal to 1. z was equal to 2. And w is equal to negative 10. And here's our unique solution. x equals 6, y equals 1, z equals 2, and w equals negative 10. And as always, you can verify your answer by replacing the values of x, y, z, and w into the original linear system 
and verify that each equation indeed is satisfied. And I leave this up to you.